Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi everybody and welcome to today's episode. Um, well, last week I got an email from a viewer, um, one of you at home, that said uh, they had an old RV. It was stored at their friend's place and the friend had sold the property and the thing had to go. Um, now, they were a few hours, uh, two and a half hours or three hours away from me, so kind of wasn't something I was really looking at doing. And then they gave me the magic number. They said, if you can pick it up, you can have it for free. <laughs> so um, that kind of justified the expense of getting it towed today. And uh, as we speak, as I'm uh, on my way back home right now, um, I have not seen this vehicle. I've only seen a picture of it from maybe uh, 10 years ago or something like that, but I know it's been stored in a Quonset. Um, I don't know what condition the interior is in, never seen pictures of the interior. So this, uh, when I'm filming, will be as much of a mystery to me as I'm filming as it will be for you guys watching. Um, but this should be an interesting episode, so I'm hoping I can get home before the tow truck does. But if not, uh, I let my kid know where it needs to get parked. So let's go find out if it's there. Uh, if not, let's go watch it get offloaded and see what exactly I got today. Follow along in today's episode when I get a free motorhome. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Okay, well let's see if there's any action happening around Yield Homestead. Don't see a truck in the driveway. Uh, oh, no, I think that the, it might already be dropped off. We're gonna go have a look. It, well, I just got home. That's the tow truck. Uh, apparently he just, I just missed him dropping off. Let's go see what it looks like. Hey guys. What's going on down here? I feel like I just I just missed all the action. No. Were you climbing on the roof already? No. <laughs> he, he just had to pull it straight in and then he just turned around there. Oh, okay. It, it was, was He said it's it's light. Like he didn't even notice it really on the back of his truck. Well, it's all aluminum. Yeah. So, this is it. Um it, It's not bad. Let's see. Last plates that were on it are from 2012. So that's a while ago, <laughs> 11 years ago, at the time I'm filming this. Uh, front suspension looks a little low. You guys are okay? Yeah. So this jumbo thing was free. Now you might be looking at it going, well, it's kind of a lump, uh, but <laughs> is that what you're thinking? Did you guys look inside of it yet? Yeah, I went in. There's oh. a surprise waiting for you. Oh, I bet. What is it, mice? <laughs> Uh, well, there for there. sure were mice. Well, I know they said that there it had mice at one point. I've not seen the inside. But what this is, is a, uh, I think it's a 72 or 74. I'll have to double check. But it's a Barth motorhome, which at the time was one of the highest end motorhomes akin to like getting an Airstream or something. The Barth was a deluxe motorhome at that time. It's a full aluminum, or if you're fancy, aluminum. Uh, it's like better shape than I thought, like on the... Yeah, it's not all beat up. I mean, we'll have to get the pressure washer to it. I wonder if the uh, awning is still up there. <laughs> so they were going to haul this off to this... I think it was destined for the scrapyard, or they were going to leave it behind on the property. Oh, they took the drive shaft off to tow it, but... There. Right, but they didn't put the drive shaft back on. Well, that'll make moving it extra fun. Um, I guess I'll be dealing with that. Okay, well, it smells mousy. They've removed some of the flooring in this area. It's not terrible. Honestly, it's better than I thought it would be. You've got this little uh, bed area up at the front that the mice have chomped their way through, so I'll have to get that reupholstered. Carpeting will need to be redone. The engine in this is actually up at the front here. And you've got like your uh, captain's seat. And I imagine these probably swivel. Yeah, they do. So you've got like a little extra seat here. An eight track player. Let's see, 57,000 miles. 
on the odometer showing a full tank of gas. Well, let's hope that's true. So, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to, I guess the, uh, the seat was eaten a little bit. This one had a cover on it. It's still not much better. Seats will need upholstery, but overall, oh, I see one of the cupboards fell from somewhere. Oh, up here, one of those, that clip didn't hold and we've got a busted cupboard. So, not terrible. It has a stove, a little gas stove, four burner, a sink, a little hood range. We got the uh, bed in the back. So there must be, yeah, curtains right here. So that turns into a two bedroom unit. Floor feels pretty solid. Am I brave enough to look in the bathroom? It's got a little sink, very 1970s. All right, thankfully there's, <laughs> there's something you should probably not do on camera. Oh, look, it even has a, uh, a radio. It's a little transistor radio toilet paper holder. So you could listen to the radio while you do your business. I'm guessing this is a fridge. It's actually not too bad. I mean, it is in better shape than I was expecting. I was expecting the floor, but I mean, the cabinets aren't terrible. It was, it was free. Um, I'm going to have to address a couple things right away, though. First off being this drive shaft situation. And I guess I'm going to be having to crawl on the grass to get that sorted out. But look, we've got, uh, looks like dual air conditioner units in the roof, rooftop AC. And lots of Febreze. Don't mind if I do, because it's a little stinky. Oh, that's even like an old uh, diner style straw dispenser. I'm going to just unload this Febreze in here. If you were here and you've ever been in a vehicle that's had mice in it, that's that's the smell. That's what we're dealing with. And as you can see, my paperwork is above there. They've got the uh, bill of sale and stuff waiting for me. So before I even try and start this thing, I had to figure the drive shaft situation out. So, yeah. Well... Not much fun, but I got the drive shaft on, and I don't know if you can see, there is only enough room for me to just squeeze my way underneath this. I don't have a, I'm on grass right now, and I don't have a dugout, so I am doing this, wiggling my way out of that little space right there. Well, I'll admit, that was a bit of a nightmare. Very easy job, like really, it's just four bolts to get the drive shaft on. But when you're climbing on the ground and it's raining, which it is today, and you barely fit underneath the thing, um, it was a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, drive shaft is on. The reason why that's important is that if I'm to get this thing running, be able to move it around the property, can't really do much without a drive shaft. So now the drive shaft's on. If I can get this thing to start and run, well, there's a hope that maybe I can actually just kind of drive it around the yard and move it when I need to do things to it. Uh, next step, I gotta figure out where the battery goes probably in one of these hatches down here or under the engine compartment. I don't really know. We're going to try and find out. Okay, what's behind hatch number one? Mm. Nope, I actually don't really know what that is. Probably, uh, well, that's probably stuff to suck your, the, <laughs> your septic out. But that looks like a little starter of some kind. Interesting. Okay, it's not behind door number one. See if I can figure out where the battery goes. Is it in the, the compartment here? Let's see. Mm, oh yeah, right there. Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. And I just so happen to have a battery left over from when I was working on that, uh, um, on the 57 Chevy. So I'm gonna see if I can get this to stay up. It looks like this has stays. Yes, it does. I'm going to go grab that battery and put it in and see if anything happens. Wish me luck. Okie dokie. Here's the battery right there. Only used once to start a Chevy. And we'll see if this will make it go. 
Okay. Who knows if that'll... I just want to see if it cranks. Don't know that I'm going to actually be able to start it. Probably not a great thing to do with the vehicle that's been sitting a while. But let's see if it does anything at all. Okay, this is what's happening right now. Starter is not engaging. Now, don't think that's a sign of a... I don't think it's a sign of a blown engine. But it could be a sign of a starter that is stuck. So I might be able to get on that starter and give it a couple good whacks and free it up. Surprisingly, that trick usually works. So off I go to find a pole or something to wackadoodle, wackadoodle ding dong dandy that starter and hope that it frees back into position. As I get things closed up here, I notice a few interesting features on this vehicle. One, it has a winch built right into it. And I tested that, that seems to actually work. So that's kind of cool. Fog lamps. Um, and look at this cable TV hookup. Look, it's got a little spot where you can, it's got a, a jack for cable television. So if you really want to have a good time at the, at the uh, RV site, some of this, what looks like MacTac, is peeling off of the aluminum. It's like, yeah, it's MacTac. That's all it is. Sticker. Probably a good pressure washing would peel most of this right off. Just in this one area, the rest of it actually looks like it stood up all right. Just this one spot got worn off. Okay, well, I'm gonna figure out that starter situation and uh, see what I can do. It's worth mentioning that this RV came stock with a uh, 402, which is big block Chevy engine, kind of a, a cool thing. In fact, um, some Mopar based RV units like that have Hemis in them uh, and big engines, big block engines. So um, a lot of these get actually scrapped out just for the drivetrain for muscle car builds, but um, this one won't be good for any of that unless I can get it started. Okay, to try and figure out maybe what's going on, I tried tapping the starter with no luck. I did find the uh, original paperwork for it. Barth, so different, you have to experience this exciting new concept. And uh, even the price list, and you wouldn't believe this thing brand new, brand spanking new, was $14,500 US in 1972. And they added on another $3,500 in, op in options. Um, it's got, uh, these are the extra options on this. It's got the, uh, it's got a generator, built-in uh, air conditioner, two air conditioners, AM, FM radio, monomatic toilet. I don't know what that is, but it sounds fun. Spare tire, wheel and mounting, pull out on lounge. Trailer hitch, privacy curtain, water purifier, two power TV shelf, antennas. It also says that it has a bar. Um, so I don't know, let's go, let's go explore and find out. The generator is going to be, well, this would be the spare tire. That was an, an option. But if I follow this cable, we look inside, it has, well, it's locked right now, but it has a generator. <laughs> that is so cool. There's a, a generator built on board here. This is a pretty deluxe unit. Okay, let's let's have a look and see if we can't figure out what's going on on the inside. Okay. Uh, okay, we got, I did hook up the, uh, what is this? Fire extinguisher. Oh no, is it? No, that's a seltzer bottle. Look at this. Rum, rye, scotch, and gin. So, I don't know exactly how this works. Does it have another release to let go of the bottom? Maybe that little thing there? I don't know. But yeah, look, you put your glass right there and you've got onboard alcohol, which I'm guessing Somehow that bottom part looks like it's meant to open. 
Hmm. I will figure this out, but that's a pretty cool feature to have on a vehicle. <laughs> As for the uh, starting, well, I figured something out. One, still getting that click, right? But the cobweb's off. Let's try that. You hear that? So I probably am gonna have to prime that carburetor, but that is, that's an engine that wants to go. So I'm gonna run out and grab some gas. We'll dump it in the carb and see if she fires up. Well, I just got back with some gas and just in the nick of time too, because the sun is going down and I don't wanna be doing this in pitch black. Uh, I'm gonna make sure the battery's connected and we'll throw a little gas in there. Yep, battery's still connected. I can remember if I did or didn't. Put a little gas down the carb and see what happens. Okay, put the gas down the carb. I'm closing that all up because, well, in case there's some backfiring happening, I don't wanna have a flame shoot up right at crotch level here. <laughs> uh, okay, make sure, are we in park? Because you don't want a surprise. Here we go. Let's find out. You hear it? Listen to that. Oh. Come on. Okay. It did start. I'm going to prime it again. Let's see if I can get it to stay running. This must be how mummies feel when they bring them back to life in those horror movies. Like, I was dead. Why are you trying to bring me back to life already? Come on, stay running. Okay, well, I know the engine actually sounds all right. Right now, what we're having is a fuel delivery issue, but that's not so bad. I think that's a good start for today. The sun is going down. I'm going to call it a night. Well, it's the next morning and I don't know if you can hear this or not, but it's running. And not only is it running, it's running off the tank, off of 10 year old gas. But with the tank being full, um, that actually is a good thing because it wouldn't have had a lot of chance for um, air to get in there. So it might be all right. Uh, I'm gonna let it warm up for a minute and see if I can actually move this thing a little closer to the front of my house. So oh, wish me luck. Okay, I've just put it in drive, have no idea if the transmission's gonna work. It probably hasn't uh, turned a wheel in a while. So far, nothing. Okay, I've got absolutely nothing with it running. It's not switching the gear. Probably a sign of low ATF, which I can probably access through this panel here. Uh, I'm going to go grab the ATF and see if I can fill it up. Okay, I just finished putting a little fluid in the transmission. Let's see if she'll go. Come on. You can do it. Okay. Look at this. Oh, it moved, but it stalled. So for the last little while here, I've been struggling trying to get this thing to start. I didn't understand, you know, I'd prime the carburetor, it would start, um, but then it would instantly stall. And I found out that the gas gauge is actually optimistic. It's always reading full, and so it was just out of gas. Now, watch this. Let's give this another try. There we go. Put it in drive. Now look at this. Windshield's a little dirty, but she's moving. Moving in and grooving. And there's Melissa watching carefully. Ooh, the brakes are a little touchy. Well, I shouldn't say touchy. They're a little non-existent, but success. And with that, with that, we have a running 
uh, Barth Motorhome, 72 Barth Motorhome. Uh, next episode, I'm going to start tearing through the interior and getting the uh, mouse-eaten carpet taken out. I'll probably have to take the seats out. I'll get this floor stripped down and basically start uh, cleaning and getting this thing looking a little bit better. So guys, stay tuned for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. So far, I have a running, driving, and somewhat stopping free motorhome. Thanks, guys. Subscribe so you can catch the rest of the episodes. As for me, I've got work to do. We'll see you all soon, and as always, bye for now.